This was the scene of the crime. In our book, it's murder. Same old story to begin with. Victim young, good looking, wanted to get on television. Had everything it takes for a great career. Some place along the line got mixed up with the wrong guy. You know, wound up dead. We don't know who did it or how. That's what we're trying to find out. About the body, not pretty. Beat up, mutilated, pretty bad. Hard to believe anybody would do a thing like that. But if you've got a strong stomach, take a look. Alive and healthy a month ago. Now, she's dead. Couldn't get her through a projector. If you could, nobody could stand to look. Yes? Speaking. Tomorrow? But you told me next week. But you've got it. Did it? We don't know. All we got are suspects. There's a guy named of Jones, lab man. He makes prints of films. He handled this print. That print was perfect when she left me. I had nothing to do with killing her. Then there's Smith. He's a film distributor. He sent the print to the station. Why would I do anything to hurt her? I loved her. And Brown. He's film director at the station. I know. You're trying to make me the fall guy. It won't work. She was with me a lot, sure, but I was taking care of her. And Harris, projectionist at the station. I only had that print long enough to thread her up. I couldn't have done her any harm. Somebody did. Somebody murdered her. My job? Find out who. We questioned the suspects, got their stories. First, this man Jones from the film laboratory. What do you pick on me for? I never hurt that print. How do you figure that? I know the kind of treatment film gets here. That's my business, protecting film, turning out perfect prints. Why ask me all these questions? Just routine. Well, I got nothing to hide. I'll tell you how it was. That print, here's where she came from. First I saw of her, she was coming off this processing machine. Brand new and perfect. And we kept her that way, too. How? Well, figure it out. What's the biggest danger to film? Dirt. All right, look around. No dirt in here. Even the air is filtered. Not a chance for any dust or dirt or stuff to get to her. Go on. Another thing. Before she ever left the machine, before I ever touched her, she was lubricated. You oiled her? No, no. Wax solution. Here. Film goes over this glass cylinder that rotates and puts the lubricant on the emulsion side. Lubricant? Yeah, we make it up ourselves. About a tenth of a gram of Hercules B16 synthetic wax to a hundred grams of solvent. Applied here, dries almost instantly. What's the idea? Protection against scratches, abrasion. Keeps the film from sticking in the projector gate. For instance, you ever hear of people having trouble with green prints? Green prints? Yeah, that's a print that hasn't been lubricated. That fresh emulsion gelatin is always soft, a little tacky, sticky. Unless you lubricate that surface, the first few times you try to project it, you can have trouble. You get sticking. Little tiny particles of that soft emulsion come off and pile up in the gate. Result is jittery picture, not steady. Not only that, if it sticks bad, the claw puts too much tension on the perforations, may even tear them. Or you can lose a loop, break the film, or the film runs off and the sprockets punch new holes. A green print will do that. Right. Another thing, where that soft emulsion piles up, 
dirt gets in. It drags against the film and you get abrasion. Sounds like what happened to this print. No, nope, couldn't have. Because like I said, she was lubricated, like all our prints. That wax coating prevents print sticking. So don't blame me for what happened to that print. Guy you're looking for must be... Never mind anybody else. What else did you do with her? What else? Well, took the reel off the machine, made a regular visual inspection. We'd have caught any defects if there'd been any. And we're still working in clean, filtered air, remember? Put her on a core, labeled her, packaged her up and shipped her off. That's all? Yeah. So if I did all that, took all that care, how could I have hurt her? I wonder. Huh? If you did all that. Next guy we talked to was Smith. Works for this film distribution outfit. His story was, sure, I remember. She came to us from the lab on a core. We inspected her while rewinding her onto a reel. Careful, were you? Sure. Brand new reel, like always. Side straight, no burrs. Was she in good shape then? Perfect. And then? Well, she went out to two or three stations. I could tell you which ones. No names. Okay. Anyway, the next I saw of her, she was still in A1 condition. That was one morning when I got her out of the rack for timing and inspection. Hold it. This sign. This film a fire hazard? What's that? Oh, no, it's all safety film. The point of no smoking is it helps keep the place clean. That's the first rule in handling film. Don't let dirt and stuff get to it. So they tell me. You can see for yourself how clean we keep it around here. There's no windows to let dirt and grime in from the outside. Tables, nothing on them except what we need to work with. No chance for dirt or abrasive material to get to our film. This is the way it always is? Sure, film's our business. You know how much it costs us when a print gets scratched up and has to be junked? Plenty. Plenty is right. That's why I keep my place looking like this. You never catch me doing like some people, letting my table turn into a junk pile. That's murder on film. Well, I got more sense than that. I'll tell you something about film. What's that? Whenever film's being handled, moved, other words wound and rewound, it builds up static electricity. It gets just like a magnet. It attracts particles of dirt, stuff from the air, cigarette ashes, dirt on the table. That stuff gets ground into the film and you've got scratches. But about this murder, you took this print to your table. Yeah, for timing and inspection. Meaning what? Well, to measure the footage first, using this counter. Uh, but that can't hurt film, providing you don't pull it through too fast. Did you? No, took it slow. Thing is, while I was timing her, I was checking for any damage, any abrasions or scratches. How? How'd I check? Held her so the light reflects off the film. Any scratches, I'd see them. Did you see any? No. What else you checked for? Any splices in the print. If there'd been any bad ones, I'd have repaired them. But there weren't. Look for any damage to the perforations. Any torn ones. They were all okay. Anything else? Yeah, I made sure that the last station hadn't left any commercials in the film, and I checked for improper cue marks. What marks? Cue marks. You know, the little marks we put at certain points in the film to uh, signal a director or projectionist when to switch over, or when the film's about over, or when to bring in a commercial. You know. I get you. The reason I check that, well, you should see some of the films we get back. Brother, the cue marks. These jokers all think they've got to have their own special cue marks at their own special places and make them good and big so they can't miss them. Looks awful. Ruins a print. I can understand why they don't use a standard cue system. Believe me. Okay, but this print, any cue marks on her? Only the right ones, that's all. Any other injuries? No. Like I say, she was in beautiful shape. Sure of that? Sure, anything wrong, I'd have reported it, but there wasn't. Condition A1, no scratches, no perforation damage. Everything okay. You wear gloves? Always. Don't catch me getting fingerprints on any phones. Clean gloves? Yeah, clean gloves. Change them every day, maybe oftener. Look, I know what you're getting at. Gloves pick up dirt particles while you work. 
run film over the cloth and it acts just like sandpaper. Only thing is, I didn't do that. My gloves were clean and I didn't drag the film over the dry cloth. I held it by the edges like always. So, then what? Well, after inspection, we rewound her and cleaned her at the same time. Cleaned her how? With wax and solvent. The same thing they use in the labs. Lubricant, is it? Yeah. Anytime you clean film, you ought to use a lubricant to do it. Just makes sense to give it that protection. This machine, it's safe? Sure. Film runs through these strips of rayon plush. Solution drips onto the material, keeps it moist. The plush is chained so no dirt gets a chance to pile up and scratch the film. Takes up on a reel and that's it. No, so you still say? That I couldn't have hurt that print. She went right into the can and the shipping case and left here. Like I say, condition A1. I swear it. Anything that happened to her later, I had nothing to do with it. I pass. Yeah, I see you. What? Passing. The buck, that is. We followed the thing a little farther. Talked to this man, Brown, film director at the TV station. He admitted he'd had a lot to do with the victim. Naturally, I did. I'm responsible for all the film here at the station. Our own prints and the ones we lease or rent. I make up the programs. See that the film's timed and cleaned. Put in commercials. Make repairs, all that. But I didn't hurt that film. What did you do to her? Well, uh, the day she came in, I got her out of the rack to take her in for timing and inspection. Sign says no smoking. I didn't smoke. We don't allow smoking where film's being handled because... I know. Then what? Took her in, put her on the table, and started timing. Table pretty clean? Yeah, clean, sure. Look at it any time. I know what dirt does to film. We're careful. Any place we're handling film, it's clean. Air conditioned. And that's all we do there. Just handle film. Don't get touchy. You project this print? No. Why not? Why, I haven't got time to project all the film we get in here. Hundreds of feet a day. Some stuff I project. Sure, if, if there's a question about it. But not this one. I, I don't think. You're not sure? No, but if I had, that wouldn't have hurt her. You can see our preview projectors in real good shape. Why, we clean the gate every other day. I know what a dirty projector can do to film. And I know what happens if you don't thread a projector right. So? So I'm careful about threading, every time. But, like I say, this print, I didn't project. All I did was timer and specter and, and put in the commercials. Take it a step at a time. Well, what I did was run her through the footage counter at a good safe speed, too. Some guys pull them through so fast they scream. <laughs> not, not me. I've seen what that can do to film. So have you. So I went slow. Meantime, I checked for scratches and damage perforations, the, the, the usual things, and then... Find any damage? No, it didn't. Anyhow, I figured the distributor had made a real thorough check and cleaned it. So there was no reason to think anything was wrong. He claims there was nothing wrong with it. Okay, well, I couldn't have heard it either. Mm-hmm. Then what'd you do? Spliced in the commercials. How? Like I always do. Listen, I know how to make a splice, mister. You can watch me anytime, right by the book. Put the film in carefully. Don't jam it on the pins. Never use scotch tape or masking tape to back up a splice. I know that. Stuff gets caught in the projector gate. Oh. Then I scrape the emulsion, and I use a scraper that's made for scraping. Wet the emulsion to soften it. Take it all off without, without cutting down into the base. Then the cement. Put it on, close her up, give it 10 or 15 seconds to dry well, and I've got a perfect splice. Well, that's how I always do it. And I keep my splicer adjusted, too, so there's no chance of uh, splices being crooked. Okay, after inspection, what? You clean it? No, it, it didn't need it. The distributor always... Ever clean film here? 
Sure, sure, our own library prints or any prints that need it. Use a machine? No, no, we clean it by hand. We run it through soft cotton pads moistened with cleaning fluid. I say clean. We keep changing the cloth so dirt can't pile up and scratch the film. Cleaning fluid? Yeah, a solvent with a little synthetic wax in it to lubricate the film. Makes it move through the projector nice and smooth. Right. Now about this print. After inspection, you rewound it. Yeah, and I was careful there, too. First place, my rewinds are lined up perfectly. No way film can drag against the sides. And then I kept a constant tension on the film. I'm not one of these wise guys when it comes to rewind and film. Wise guys? Yeah, you've seen them showing off, building up speed, then, then coasting, letting the film drag over the table so it gets scratched, or cranking it through with a jerky motion so you won't get a good snug roll. And none of that stuff for me, uh huh? Steady speed, constant tension when I rewind. Yeah. Something else. I've seen guys do a sloppy job so the film's loose on the reel. Then they'll yank on the end of the film till it's tight. Worst thing you can do. Any dirt particles on the film just get ground along against the emulsion and dig grooves, cinch marks. You've seen them look like this. Yeah, I've seen them. That's why I didn't cinch the film. Never do. Rewound are good and snug on a good reel. No bent sides, no burrs. Put her in with the next day's programs. That's all I did. I didn't hurt that print and you can't prove I did. I'm innocent, so help me. Funny thing. Huh? If you're innocent, why would you want help? That left us with one more suspect. Harris, projectionist at the TV station. Had an answer to everything. Oh, I grant you film can get ruined in projection. It happens. But not if the film is in good shape and the projector is working right. Now that's my job. No bent reels and I never spin the take-up reel after I'm threaded up. And I'll... Now, my projector never harmed that print. Sure of that? Figure it out. I'm supposed to get a good picture on the screen. Only way I can do that is to keep that projector clean. If I... The gate gets dirty and the picture starts jumping around like this. Or the sound scanning system gets dirty and the sound goes haywire. Like this. Noisy, you see? Yes, friends. Feed your pooch doggy drops. He'll go for that yummy flavor. And remember, doggy drops are double enriched. Now twice as effective. Get the handy 50-pound economy size at your neighborhood kennel. So I don't let those things happen. I work on that projector. Work on it? How? Well, take the gate. Every chance I get, I pull it out and clean it. Especially along these rails. Let emulsion or dirt pile up here, and it's liable to scratch the film, particularly on the soundtrack area. Then you've got a noisy track. Go on. Another thing, if the gate's dirty, the film can't move through freely. Tends to stick when the intermittent pulls down on the perforation. Now that extra strain can scar those perforations, may even tear them. Then you lose your loop, get run off, really chew up the film. That's what happened here to the victim? Nope, that's what didn't happen. Because I cleaned that gate, got the dust out of it, and that isn't all. I checked every film contact point, made sure the rollers were all really rolling, not stuck so the film was dragging over them. Now that could happen. Did it? No, I told you I checked it. Part of my normal maintenance. Like checking the sound system all the time, cleaning all the film contact points to make sure we get the best sound quality. And also, make sure the film doesn't get scratched when it goes over the drum. Main thing with a projector is to keep it clean and lubricated right. Then it'll never damage film. Not if the film's okay to begin with. How about threading? Well, what about it? Listen, I know my job. I thread that projector 50 times a day and I do it right. Ask anybody, they'll tell you. 
or you can watch me yourself. Anything goes wrong during projection, it's because there are bad splices in the print or torn perforations or dirt on the film. I take care of this projector and I thread it up the right way. Now that's all I can do. I projected that print and I put her in the rack. That's the last I saw of her. Not quite. What do you mean? You see her now. So, there it's a murder that everybody says couldn't have happened. We don't know who did it. All we know is this. If all the suspects had treated the victim like they say they did, she'd be alive today. Only she's not. Somebody's guilty. Maybe all of them together. But if they stick to their stories, we're stuck with a perfect crime. It happens more than you think. As for you, we figure you're innocent. This case, you can go. Just one thing. You want to stay in the clear and get this straight. Every time you handle film, better figure it's a matter of life or death, because it is. Get a little careless, and we may be after you for murder on the screen.